you're not fully gripping. You're kind of just sort of pinching them and letting them bounce. Hey, I'm Kevin from Tame Impala, and I'm gonna be talking about some of my favorite drum sounds and drum parts that I've loved and cherished over the years and probably been influenced by. I think people think I'm kind of joking when I say I spend 90% of my time on drums when I'm working on a song, but it's uh, dead true. It's like me chasing the dragon, you know? <laughs> I love drum sounds that are just fuzzed out and and just destroyed sounding. But I also love I also love the opposite of that. I had to narrow the the um, category or it was gonna be way too difficult to pick my favorite. Just I had to just say like, okay, it's drums uh, that are played by people, you know, like recorded, recorded uh, real drums. I think that one's incredible because that was recorded in like 67 or something. It's like a breakbeat. It's like a breakbeat before there were breakbeats. It's so uh, robotic and repetitive that I feel like if that song came out today, it would be filed under electronic, you know? Even though it's just someone playing the drums. The hi-hat, which goes up and down, you control it with your left foot. When you play a sort of a jazz beat, you, you, you keep that going to keep time. But if you're really clever, you can do it on the off beat, which means you do it, uh, you do it in between those on beats. So instead of going, tss, 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 you go. Playing on the ride cymbal, the ride cymbal is the big brass one. Playing that with a sort of a trip hop, kick and snare, and counting on the hi hat is uh, that's how you get that sound. I feel like everyone has that like riff that they just play when you pick up a guitar. You, you, it's like muscle memory. Like that beat is the one I do when I jump on, when I jump on drums now. Because it sounds the coolest. Obviously no uh, discussion about drum sounds and drum playing would be complete without talking about John Bonham and the Led Zeppelin drum sound. Like the famous Led Zeppelin drum break is uh, levy when the levy breaks. So I was gonna do when the levy breaks, but I kind of just feel like everyone else, is, it, it's, it's been covered, you know? I feel like most people got the wrong idea. Like there's this idea that Led Zeppelin drums are like super like powerful, solid. People say like hit like a bricklayer, but I don't think that's actually true. I think there's a lot more of a delicate way that he played, the way he sort of goes from smacking the drum and playing a teensy little ghost note. It's just a really quiet hit. And it's, it's usually a really quiet hit in between a normal hit. It's, it just adds dynamic to your playing. Also with the double kick, I noticed there. So double kick is boom, 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 boom. You've got one foot on the kick pedal, but you do it twice super quick, which is a technique that takes a long time to get. But I think he kind of like, exploited his ability to do that. And then from then on, everyone was just doing double, every, like everyone was trying to do double kick. That was like, they became a part of skilled rock drumming, you know? So I think the reason why people think that Bonham hit the drums so hard and why people, when they try to replicate Bonham, they just smack the drums is because the compression makes it sound louder than it is. You can hit a drum quite quietly and using compression you can make it sound a lot more energetic. But for me, like, emotion in rock drumming is, is just John Bonham, you know, that's it. His father works some days for 14 hours And you can bet he barely makes a dollar So I'm pretty sure Stevie Wonder is playing drums in that song. I read somewhere that he did the drums first and he had the whole he knew the whole song in his head he just played the drums with n no backing no nothing he just played along to the song in his head and then just played the song back over the top of that with every, all of the other in instruments which is mind boggling and in that way it's almost the, it's like the most expressive some of the most expressive drumming he's kind of just feeling it out uh, in real time which again is kind of why it reminds me of me. I mean, obviously I've got the drum beat in my head before I start, but it's fun. It's like drumming's the most fun when you don't know what you're doing. He's, uh, he's playing it quite heavy on the hi-hat, which is cool. Like some drum sounds just make me dream. You know, I'm just like, oh, 
you know, and the hi hat on that song particularly, I just go, ah, oh, that's I could just listen to that on its own, over and over. His mother goes up, scrub the floors for me. Some drums make you want to dance, and some drums make you want to strut, and uh, that's a strut. <laughs> I just love that um, counting on a hi and that song, and it's just so, it's so brooding and so ominous, even. Uh, and it's just the simplest thing. It's just counting the the hi hat on quarter notes. I don't think it was an accident that that ended up being so loud in the mix. You know, I feel like if if he was just counting, they would have turned it down in the mast in the uh, the bounce down. But it's nice and loud, and with all the sort of the strings swelling in the background. <laughs> There is something categorically different and, and qualitatively different about someone hitting something, multiple hits of the same thing versus someone hitting it once and then digitally reproducing it. I believe that the brain can pick up when something is being digitally reproduced. If it was someone they just sampled a hi-hat and they just played it, tsk, 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 I think that would give a different feeling to the sound of someone just going, tsk, tsk. do you know what I mean? Porter's head drum sounds are like a holy, one of just one of the holy grail drum feels and like approaches to drums and have been for years. It's a breakbeat, it's a breakbeat category, um, but uh, obviously so much more moody. I love, I just love Jeff Barrow's approach to drums. It's a pretty standard pattern. He does a, um, actually, I don't actually know what that's called at the end. Like a uh, buzz roll. You can hear that in Tame Impala drums. So, uh, on no toi has it. Uh, and when I'm doing that. It's like a marching, marching uh, technique. You sort of push it into the drum so that it, it sort of bounces along. So you're bouncing the sticks on the, um, on the skin and it just creates this kind of flutter of sound, which is just so, it's just so kind of like cool sounding. Uh, do you want to get us the uh, snare drum on the uh, Ludwig? Oh, thanks bro. You're not fully gripping, you're kind of just sort of pinching them and letting them bounce. I actually have really bad technique. Like I've never, I never got taught to do that. I kind of just did it from ear. So those drums, they sound super impactful and punchy, but they're hitting it extremely quietly. But because of the compression, it sounds, it sounds like they're hitting it a lot harder than they are. It's too loud for the medium and kind of it gets a bit crushed. That's where you can get some real energy in the sound because it just sounds sounds distorted and blown out. Uh, so that's Steve Droz playing drums there. I love his style too. It's just so bombastic but emotive. It shows you that drumming that is loud and and strong doesn't have to sound angsty. It can sound ecstatic and uplifting. That's the thing, yeah, that pattern is uh, really common and really standard, but for some reason it's just it's just played with such feeling. So those drums are super saturated. Saturation is kind of like the, the classy word for distortion. Because distortion can sound angry and 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 like you know metal obviously has a lot of distortion. Distortion is when the signal is too loud for what it's trying to get through. If this is a waveform, it'll cut it off there, so it'll go, uh, you know, and it can't. So that creates this, distor this distortion sound. But in that context, to me, it just sounds so psychedelic and so ecstatic and uplifting. It changed everything for me. Uh, with drum sounds. 
suddenly I just wanted all my drums just to be completely blown out. You can see where I, where, at which point I went to Japan and saw Flaming Lips live and then went back and recorded Lonerism and the drums sounded like that. Like you can, you can, you can hear. So, I mean, like a big part of me going to Dave Fridman was like, I want that drum sound, you know? He's the one that mixed Inner Speaker and Lonerism. I'd be uh, remiss if I didn't mention his name in all this because he was, he, it's um, his production that led to that drum sound. Sick, sick drumming. Uh, the drummer's name is Joey Waronka, who actually came to the studio once. He played um, in my friend's band. Uh, he played on a song. We've always been a big fan of his drumming. I guess probably since that song, you know. I think it's more coming from jazz drumming because that's where like psych rock, psych like rock drumming. That's where that's that's what its roots are in. All those early psych rock drummers were were jazz drummers, or they were their favorite drummers were jazz drummers, like, like Alvin Jones and stuff. Elvin Jones. For me, it's kind of like a benchmark and like modern drum sound. Like the drum sounds are so kind of psychedelic and and unhinged. There's more drum fill than regular beat, you know? It's basically just one big drum fill, which is obviously just I guess, probably what Beck wanted him to do, which is like, just let, he just let him loose, you know? Because so so it's just such a free sound, you know? It's just someone just rumbling around the kit not feeling like they're that they have a job to like hold down the band you know because like traditionally that's the drummer's role it's like you're holding down you know, the rhythm section holding it down but like that's that that's a song that that's a good example of it's not that's not the drummer's role you know the drummer can be going wild over the top uh love that song I feel like that album, it was one of the last great rock albums. That whole album's drumming, it's Dave Grohl, who's obviously of Nirvana drumming fame. Queens of the Stone Age, a lot of that Queens of the Stone Age song is just that like motoric, like, do -do 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 -do, like kind of really robotic, like robotic rock and roll. And then like Dave Grohl is like, he's like the modern rock drummer, right? He's so disciplined, so metronomic, so hard, you can tell he's, whacking them. Like John Bonham, he uses drum fills as a motif sometimes. So like in that bit, like Any any regular drummer would have just played through that. But he made a part out of it and that created kind of like the heart of the song in, in a way. Like that, that, that kind of section of music, it made it into a thing. I think Dave Grohl recorded the drums to a metronome on top of all the music, I think. Maybe that's a secret. But anyway, seeing it being recorded on like Pro Tools or whatever, to the grid, which is like the metronome, it was like, he said it was just me mesmerizing how spot on he was. Like hit after hit, like it's human to uh, to drift in and out with it because it's really difficult to always be on time. But apparently, like he's unbelievably good. Dave playing on the beat is that an example of a drummer being in the pocket? The pocket, yeah. The pocket is a funny concept, and I still don't know where I stand on it. But um, a drummer playing in the pocket is kind of like laid back, uh, not too excited not ahead of the beat, they're kind of just behind it, but not so behind it that they're out of time. Playing in the pocket is more of a feeling, I believe. I don't think Queens of Stone Age drumming is about necessarily being in the pocket. I think it's just about having that just unrelenting robotic feel. I feel like one of the important, one of the things that has to happen for you to want to dance or like strut or air drum is that you have to feel like you can rely on the drums. When you feel like you can't rely on the drums, you're like, oh, I'll probably just like sit down, huh? But in that song, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, when I do that, it's gonna be that. Even when he does a drum fill, they, they sound reliable. When I was asked to pick a couple of my own songs for drum sounds, after having listened to all my favorite drum sounds, listening to mine, I was like, that's trash, that's trash, trash. <laughs> 
even though I care so much about my drums, and I'm and I am proud of them. I'm proud of my drum sounds, but uh, it was tough. I'm playing a pretty sort of standard hip hop beat, moving from normal snare hit to a rim shot. In fact, you can hit the start of that song. You can hear me. I haven't quite decided on how I'm going to hit the snare. Rim shot is when you hit like just the rim of the snare. You get that kind of. drum sound like this song, it's kind of the coming together of a lot of different styles and drum sounds that I love, which is the, sometimes the hard bit about me writing a drum part and recording and producing drum sounds because I love so many different things that are at the opposite ends of the spectrum. I love drums that are super minimal, like R&B, kind of just like an 8 away and a and there's, there's nothing else in the mix other than just maybe like a really quiet, small sounding hi-hat. But I also love Race for the Prize, distorted, blown out, thrashy drums, you know? Like I'm, I'm never truly happy with a drum sound. I'm like, whenever I finish a song or an album, I'm like, well, I, 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 I did as, as well as I could in the time that I had. You know, I send it off to the master and it's like, it wasn't the best drum sound, but I'll get it next time, you know? Like, it must have been like a month later, a couple of months later, I was walking past a bar. You kind of hear the drums before you hear the music. And I was like, oh, that's a nice drum sound. And it was that song. I was like, oh shit, it's me. Oh shit, it's a new person. I was like, that was a great snare sound. I remember thinking like, great snare sound. I should, I should be shazamming this, you know? Which I guess shows me that like, you, you're, you're your own worst, your harshest critic. So it took me listening to it, thinking it was someone else's drum sound for me to actually appreciate it. Which, you know, this is the way it goes, I guess. Yeah, it was good enough for Rihanna, apparently.